copy of God's Word, Bible, copy of the New Testament, in its entirety, offer to you freely, without any cost or any obligation to you. One of God, which is uh, able uh, to impart wisdom to you that leads to God's salvation, even to eternal life. Yours for the taking, freely offered, freely received, and uh, without any obligation to you. You'd like one, do feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly place that uh, into your hand. But of God, of course, uh, is uh, essential, necessary for a body to come to an understanding. What it is that, uh, uh, no, that's, uh, that's you, ma'am, that's you. God is alive and well and able uh, to save even rebels such as you. And of course, that's the very reason well, why God's given us his word, the Bible, because we need saving, you know, because um, we've all gone out of the way. We've all turned to our own way, forsaken God. And of course, the Bible does warn us that all the nations, the wicked, all the nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. So that you might avert such an end, God has uh, given you his instruction manual as a means by which a person can come to a knowledge of the forgiveness of their sins, of God himself, of Jesus Christ. This is eternal life, says Jesus, that they might know God and he whom they sent, he said, that is, even Jesus Christ himself. The Bible, read uh, uh, God's word for today here in Hanley. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heaven. We have transgressed and rebelled, and thou hast not pardoned. And of course, well, there, the very reason why God bids us to search our hearts our ways, try our ways, because we have transgressed, and the judgment of God has come upon us, even now. The Bible, of course, speaks about the coming wrath of God, the coming judgment of God, and the last day, the final judgment. But of course it does also reveal to us that God, well, is judging us in this present moment. Why, of course, we find ourselves in such a condition as we do today. In our own society here, in our country, and of course, the world over. But the Bible says that the wrath of God is revealed against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Well, that wrath, you might say, well, where is it revealed? Well, you see it, you see in the behavior of your fellow man. You see it in what comes out of the mouth of men and women, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, Jesus said. You see, what comes out of the mouth is what comes out of the heart, what's in the heart. And of course, what comes out, well, all kinds of blasphemies, all kinds of cursing and swearing, all kinds of uncleanness, all the things that you see in your world, your society today, things that men and women engage in that they ought not to engage in. And of course, know it only too well, but plunge themselves into more and more darkness. That is the very judgment of God. You know, people talk about the possibility of God judging us because of the way that we conduct ourselves. Well, you see, the way that you conduct yourself, that is the very judgment of God. That's what he gives men and women over to when they hold the truth 
in unrighteousness. Suppress it, that is, the truth of the knowledge of God and his righteousness. So therefore, God, he would have you to deal. God says, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord, because that's the only hope, salvation at the hands of the Lord God Almighty here, who made you, gave you a being, put breath into you, and the one who one day will take it, and maybe quite sharply, quite suddenly, who knows the day of their departure, who knows when God shall take the breath of life from you. You know not the day, the hour, the moment. Now is the time to get right with God, to be reconciled to God. Have your transgressions dealt with, your sins forgiven, taken away by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent into the world for this reason. Not so much to make you religious, but save you, rescue you from your worst, your greatest, and no danger, that of your sinful heart condition. Desperately wicked, says God, deceitful above all things. Who do you think is the most deceitful thing in all the world today? Some politician, maybe some of you, would raise your hands and say, I know, Tony Blair. Is there anyone more deceitful than him? Anything more deceitful? Oh yes, there is. Your own very personal heart, deceitful above all things. And it's that condition, that heart condition, that you need to be saved from. So God would have you, bid you, to try and set your way. That is uh, your manner of living, a man's way, the woman's way in the Bible is a matter of living. And it's that, of course, that God is displeased with. But the matter of living, your way comes from your thinking, your wrong thinking, godless thinking, suppression of the truth and unrighteousness. Why elsewhere in the Bible God says, let the wicked forsake his way, his manner of living, and the unrighteous man is thought. It's the unrighteous thinking. It's the mindset, you see. It's the heart, the mind, and the heart of the same. And when the unright when there's unrighteous thinking, well, then that leads to, well, to wicked ways, manner of living that's displeasing to God. The motivation, you see, the motivation for your way, for your manner of living, is one of two things. It's either hatred for God or love for God. When a man and woman loves God, well, their way is pleasing to God. They live in a way that's pleasing to God. They live in a way, of course, the way of obedience to the commandments of God. They're a delight to them. They love them. They meditate in the law of God night and day, and they walk in the way of God's commandment. But of course, the person whose man of life, whose ways are not pleasing to God, well, they do so. Why? Because of a, a deep-seated, natural-born hatred for God and a hatred for God's ways. And why they don't walk in God's ways? Because they hate God, but that's the state you see. Oh, you might be a very respectable person, and you might even be a religious person. But here's the thing, friends. Your sin, your ways are motivated by the way, by the state and condition of your nature. If you're still in your natural born state, if you've never been born again, as Jesus puts it, if God has not supernaturally, miraculously changed your nature, caused you to be born again to a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, well, you're still in your natural state. You're still in your natural born condition. And that is one of hatred for God. 
And that's what motivates, that's the motivation of your ways, of your life, of your action, your words, your thoughts, your deeds, motivated by a deep seated, maybe even unconscious hatred for God. So God, he bids you try your ways, set your ways, and do it today, friends, while you got the time. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. That is to repent, friends, from of that hatred of God and hatred of His ways. And of course, too, a hatred of your ways, to forsake your way and your unrighteous thinking. That is to get into a right frame of mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus and in your right mind, as, uh, as is written in the Word of God in yet another place. But of course, uh, well, you don't search your ways. You don't try your ways as God says, as God demands of you. So God does it for you. Hence the judgment of God. He searches and He tries your ways and He finds them displeasing. And that's why the wrath of God is upon you all over you like a rash. That's why God judges you. Why God brings a nation to judgment. That's why the chaos, that's why the uncleanness abounds in your nation and society today. That's why the world over, you see the wickedness, you see the evil that's done uh, in the kingdom of men, given over by God, you see because men won't try their, their own ways, because they won't search out their own ways. Turn to the Lord, repent of their sins. So given over more and more to the wickedness in which you delight in, and the result of it, well, you see it all over your society. Broken marriages, do you ever question the fact, you know, why it is that there is so much broken marriages and relationships, children without fathers, mothers, you know, and children born who don't even know who their fathers are, uh, you know, marital chaos abounds in your society because your ways are not pleasing to God, that's why. And children that rebel against you, is it any wonder? You rebel against authority, you rebel against God's authority. You live in defiance of God's authority. So God gives you over, you know, to this chaos, this rebellion, utter rebellion in your society and your own children kicking against you, rebelling against your authority. Children running wild and doing drugs and all kinds of, all kinds of debauchery. It's a society, you see, that God is judging. And of course, well, you know, the failure in your employment, lives that are, you know, broken, men and women broken in mind, broken in body, you know, as a result of their ways, a result of their, their sinful ways, their sinful lifestyle that comes from their wrong, unrighteous thinking. Because of that sinful nature, state and condition, God, you see, His judgment, His wrath is all over your society and nation as a result, but of course, you know, when the marriage breaks down, when the kids rebel, when the kids go wild, when your job fails, you know, it's never you to blame. Oh, it's never, you never look at yourself and say, well, it's my fault. It's always somebody else to blame. Just like Adam, your first parent, right back in the beginning, it wasn't him. It was the woman to blame, you know? Always, always shifting the blame. Always somebody else to blame. The marriage fails. Well, it was her, it was him, it wasn't me, you know? The kids rebel, the kids go wild. It's not your fault. It couldn't possibly be your fault. Well, search and try your ways, says God. Look at yourself. 
Look into your own heart. Try your way. How would I do that, you see? Well, against the measuring rule of God's law, God's commandments, God's work. That's why the judgment of God is upon you because of your transgression, because of your rebellion, your iniquities. You're living with your fist in your maker's face. That's why the judgment, that's why the wrath of God is all over your nation. But of course, it's never, never you to blame, you know. You never get to that place of saying, well, you know, I look at myself, I look at myself in the mirror of the wall, and it tells me, tells me the same story. I'm the fairest of them all. Couldn't possibly be my fault. Couldn't possibly be me. Eh? But God says, yes, it is. It's your sinful, iniquitous, rebellious heart that's the problem. It's your nature that's the problem. You're the problem. And God bids you to try and set your ways. Bring your ways, bring your thoughts, bring your mindset to the Word of God, to the law of God, and see how far removed you are from God and from God's ways, and how displeasing you are to God, and why the wrath of God is upon you like a rush. And turn to the Lord, for He will abundantly pardon. Seek ye the Lord while He may be found, Call ye upon him while he is near, says the Bible. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, for he will abundantly pardon. Ah, you see, friends, oh, you know when things go wrong, the marriage breaks down, the kids go off the rail, the job fails, you know. Ah, oh, there's a sorrow. There's a sorrow, there's a, there's a brokenness, you know, regarding the situation, but it's the sorrow, the Bible says, that leads to death. It's the sorrow of the world. It's not a godly sorrow. It's not a sorrow, you know, that you've offended God, that you've broken God's laws. It's not a sorrow that your ways are contrary to God. It's the very opposite. It's a sorrow that leads to death. But God requires of you that sorrow that leads to repentance. That sorrow, that brokenness of heart, that contrition of heart that's pleasing to God. A mourning because you've offended divine love. But I don't see much of that. In fact, I don't see any of that hardly these days. I see hardness of heart. I hear people reviling God. I hear people mocking. I hear people doing anything but. I hear them laughing about sin, joking about sin. I hear them talking about it as their delightful entertainment. But no sorrow, no brokenness of heart, no weeping, no lamenting, no uh, kneeling before the cross and crying out to Jesus Christ that you might be forgiven for your transgression. Try and search your way, says God, and return to the Lord. Turn to Him. Turn, turn. Repentance is what God requires of you. But a broken heart, a broken heart because of sin, a sorrow because you've offended God, where's that to be found in your society today? Marriages break down, kids go off the rails, the job fails. Everybody to blame. Everybody but you. No sorrow, no repentance, no turning to God, and therefore no forgiveness. Therefore no lifting of the wrath of God from off you. That's not possible until there is repentance with you. Until there is faith towards the Son of God who came into the world that you might be rescued from the wrath of God. So God calls you to try and set your ways, to be your own prosecutor, instead of being your own defense attorney, instead of defending yourself in God's court, be your own prosecutor. Prosecute yourself 
and do it ruthlessly. Look into your heart and see what's there. Yeah? Not the mirror and the wall. Not your face. Not your makeup. Not the hairdo. Not the Armani clothing. To look into your heart and see what's there. You condemn other people for their actions. You say they should be stoned, locked up, the key thrown away. They ought to be hanged. Always, always judging other people, eh? For their actions, but never you. Never prosecuting yourself. Huh? Well, today, says God, be your own prosecutor. Yeah? Judge yourself. Judge your own ways. Look into your hearts, and you'll find the same things there that you judge other people for. The same uncleanness, the same perversion, the same adultery, huh? the same thieving, the same covetousness. You'll find the same murder there in your hearts that you judge other people for. You want to be saved. You want to get right with God. You want to end up in heaven when you cock your toes up and go out of this world. And you will, you will, sooner or later, you need to prosecute yourself. You need to judge yourself. And judge yourself in accordance with the word of God, the law of God that pronounces you, that prosecutes you, that condemns you to a man, to a woman, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None righteous, not one, says God, none that doeth good, not a single one of them. Your righteousnesses are like filthy rags in the sight of God. That's the best of your deeds, not the worst. So try your ways, search your ways, and turn to the Lord and repent. But you got to do some prosecuting. You got to do some judging of your own heart, your own ways. Search your heart, ran ransack your heart ruthlessly, mercilessly. Give yourself no excuses. Be done with the excuses. You know? It was my circumstances, you know? If they had been different, if I had a better job, a better wife, a better husband, better children, it wouldn't work out the way that it has done. But again, you see, it's blame shifting. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Well, they're no good before the judgment of God. In that day when God brings you to justice, in God's courtroom, all the excuses in the world won't matter a whit. No, friends, be done with the excuses. Get real with yourself. A reality check is what you need. The insanity of sin is all over you, and the wrath of God is all over you. And that is the revealed wrath of God, the insanity to which you're given over to. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Time for a reality check. Try and search your way. Compare them, if you will, if you dare, to the righteous standard by which God one day will bring you to judgment. And friends, let it bring you let it bring you to that place of tears. Let it bring you to that place of sorrow. Let it bring you to that place of brokenheartedness, the contrition that God requires of you. A broken and a contrite heart is not displeasing to God, but your ways are, your ways are. Let it bring you to that place of repentance, a deep and serious repenting, turning from your ways and turning to God's way, revealed, of course, in his word in the Bible and nowhere else, to repentance and a turning to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only Savior, the only one who can clear you 
God's court, the only one who can clear you before the judge, the great advocate, Jesus, unless he defends you, unless he clears you, unless he saves you, unless he washes you, unless he changes your bad heart, your bad nature from which your ways come, and unless he clears your bad record, you stand before God, and I tell you, it will not turn out good for you. Try your ways, search your ways, says God, and turn to the Lord. The repentance is required of you. Examine God's law. Bring yourself to the commandments of God. Peruse them, study them, meditate upon them until you are filled with utter self-disgust. That's the place that you must come to, the place of absolute and utter self-disgust to see yourself as you truly and really are, and that is disgusting, absolutely vile before God. I ask you, who are you? I ask you, what are you? You tell me I'm a good person. You tell me I'm a respectable person. Wrong answer, wrong answer. You don't know yourself. When you tell me, when you answer that question, and you say, I'm a vile, rotten, disgusting sinner before Almighty God and not worthy of the least of his blessings, then you've come to the right place, but not until. You don't even know yourself. How can you possibly know God if you don't know yourself? If you don't know what you are? If you don't know the wrong for which you've been doing? Just a lump of sin Walking, talking, breathing, sin, that's all you are. And displeasing to God in all your ways. Try and search your ways, says God, and return to the Lord in the way of repentance and faith toward Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It means a holding up of the hands. Yes, the unclean hands. The hands with blood on them. Eh? The blood of defenseless, unborn children in their millions slaughtered in this nation in the name of abortion on the altar of your sexual pleasure. That blood is on the hands of this nation. Death, death by abortion. Death by euthanasia. Death by violence and drugs. Blood on the hands of this nation. Try and set your ways as God and turn to the Lord. With your sin, with your transgressions, with, that, with those bloody hands raised up to God and crying out to Him, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Raised an acknowledgement that God is right and you're wrong. Raised Raised before God, acknowledging that your ways have been wrong from the moment of your conception, your birth even. Acknowledging that God is holy and right and just and you are sinful and contrary to God every which way. In your nature and in your practice, contrary to God, that's what it means to be ungodly and to be ungodly means to be separated from God to have the wrath of God all over you like a rash as I say so you see try your way search your ways and use a Bible to do it not your own imagination not the thinking of the not the, not the imagination of the state, the government, the education system, but God's holy word. Because this is, the, this is the record, and this is the standard by which you'll be judged in that day. It's this standard that you've got to come up to. You've got to meet God's standard. And that's the perfect righteousness. Well, where on earth would I get that, you say? Well, from Jesus Christ. 
is the perfect righteousness of God. Trusting in Him, in His works, and not yours. Trusting in His ways, not yours. He is God's way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Try and set your ways as God. Return to the Lord in the way that is of repentance and faith toward Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who came into the world to rescue transgressors such as you and I. Turning means turning from sin. Turning means turning from all that you know to be sin, all that you know to be contrary to God, turning from it. Turning, of course, in your heart and your mind. It's there that the change must begin. It's there. It's in the heart. It's in the mind. It's the thinking that's wrong. You've got to start aligning your thoughts with God's thoughts and acting upon them. You find those in the Bible and in the Bible alone. And when you begin to align your thinking with God's thinking, agreeing with God's thinking, you find your life already wonderfully, your ways changing. But of course, done, done with faith towards the Son of God, Jesus Christ. For one is useless without the other. There must be more. They're yoked together. Repent ye and believe, Jesus said. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. And you cannot enter it but by the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God. But you refuse. We reject God's salvation. And friends, you remain far, far away from God, even as you are now. So, friends, today you will hear his voice. Do not heart, harden not your heart. Today, friends, not tomorrow, because you've not been given tomorrow. You've not been given next week. You've not been given old age. Friends, you have but today. You breathe God's air. You walk upon his air. He gives it to you. His to give and his to take. He's the giver of life, the author of life. Yeah, you go to the world looking for life, but do you find it? You plunge yourself into your iniquity, into your wicked, evil ways. You plunge yourself into the world, and do you find life? I just want to live, you see. And if you go plunge yourself into the world, do you find life? No, you don't. Can I, All you find is nothing but death. Can I ask you a question?
always kiss it off. How can you decide? If, the, if there's no God, how could you decide? Where do you, where do you get knowledge from? 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 Where do you get experience from? Where do you get experience from? How do you get your knowledge about a matter? In the beginning, in the beginning there was an explosion. In the beginning there was an explosion with a bang, 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 bang. And there was a, a great big lump of matter. And out of that great lump of matter, you got life and you got knowledge. You got the law of magic, the law of logic. Huh? Yeah. So, what did you say though? Huh? Matter. So where do you get knowledge about matter? How do you get knowledge about matter? God has, God has revealed things to you. That's how you can do science. Have a nice day. He's like a copy. Don't believe. like a copy of no, God's word. No, 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 no. It, 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 no really, I've, I've, I've read all of it. It'll help you think it. Well, you need to read it again, so then. Eh? It'll help you think it. It'll help you think it. It'll make you wise. It'll make you wise, sir. Which branch are you? I'm a Bible believing Christian, sir. Yeah, well, which one? That's it. That's it. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Christian. There's only one kind of Christian. No, no, no. Catholics are not Christians. Protestant? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm a Christian, sir. Say that they're I'm not a Christian. Catholic. Catholic because they're not Christians, sir. They're idolaters. <laughs> Religious idolaters. Yeah? Same as same as <laughs> the same as Muslims, the same as, as Buddhists, same as Confucius. They're all it's all religious idolatry, sir. Except, only, except if you're Protestant. You well, except you're a Christian. God. Except you're a Christian. You have to be born again, sir. God has to do a work in your heart. Let us to take that unbelief out of your heart. Give you a new heart, one that loves God, desires God, and lives for God. That's what you need, sir. You need to be born again, and then you need to repent and believe the gospel, sir. No one has come back to tell you anything. Yes, Jesus did. Jesus did. He rose again from the dead. And he tells us it's appointed for man once to die, and after this, the judgment that you tremble at it, sir. Tremble at it. Fear God. Only so Jesus. Only Jesus. So only Jesus. Up. Only Jesus. No, evolution's made up. Evolution's made up. No. You sure you wouldn't like one? No. Uh, it's good. Make you why? Give you wisdom. You're just waste wisdom. my time. Wisdom. Man. No, I mean, no, no. Wisdom, I mean, sir. Really wisdom. Not no. cleverness you need. It's wisdom, no, no, sir. No, no. I didn't say I was clever. Wisdom. Wisdom. But I'm no stupid to wisdom. accept God wisdom. exists. Wisdom. No. Well, well, God says that's what an atheist is. <laughs> God says he's a fool. The no, fool, the you fool know, says... You know yourself, he doesn't exist. The fool says in his heart Show there is me. no God. No, I know he exists. Show me the Because I know, I know him. I know him. <laughs> You're the only one, man. Eh? No, I'm not. There's millions of us, man. What What happened to all those people who died? What There's, happens to the world? Well, those that believe went to heaven. And those like you go Where, down. They go to hell. Where is the heaven? And you go to hell. You go to hell. If you, if you don't I'm repent, all, you don't repent and believe the gospel, you go to hell, sir. In hell because the people well, are I'm here, here to talk to you to tell you that you might be rescued from I that. Am already I don't in want hell. you to go to hell, sir. I am already in hell because no, no, of people no, like no. you. No, you're who not, lie sir. About no, existence. not yet. Not yet. You haven't even begun to think, sir. Well, I tell you, you got it all wrong. repent, Thank sir. You. Repent and believe the God. I love your soul. Repent and believe the gospel. I want you to come to heaven with me. I want you to come to heaven with me. Don't go down. What? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Repent of your atheism. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, sir. Love your soul. Get saved. Get right with God. So like I was saying, friends, before I was interrupted, reject and refuse God's salvation and the end of it. Well, you remain far away from God, separated from God as a result of your iniquities even now. But to remain that way, far away from God, separated from God in this life and time, but then for all eternity, if you don't repent, if you don't believe, talking to the gentleman there just now you know he calls himself an atheist there's no such thing on the planet no such a thing you know that god is every man woman and child born into this world knows that god is 
God has manifested in you, shown it unto you, even you clearly even understand it, says God. So friends, you got to repent. you got to turn to the Lord. Try your ways. Search your ways. And turn to the Lord. Repent. And turn to God through faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, that you might be rescued from your ways which are evil and displeasing to God. And call your sin for what it is. Call it sin. Not a mistake. Not a slip. Not something that, you know, well, we all do things wrong. Call it what it is. Sin. Call your adultery what it is. Call your fornication what it is. Call your sodomy what it is. Sin. Call your thieving what it is. Sin. Call your coveting what it is. Sin. Call it for what it is. Don't make excuses. Call it for what it is. Sin. And sin is against God. Ultimately, it is against God only that you sin. And it's His forgiveness that you need. And that's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's where the gospel comes in. Because that's the heart of the gospel. That there is forgiveness with God. That you can be forgiven. But not as long as you excuse it. Not as long as you call it something else that it's not. Call it for what it is. Call it sin. And get rid of it. Repent of it. Let the Son of God, Jesus Christ, take it away. The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and would take away yours too. Identify the cause of all your troubles, your marital breakdowns, your rebellious wild children, your broken employment opportunities. Yeah, call it for what it is. Identify the cause of all your troubles. Sin lies at the bottom. Sin is the fountain, is the source out of which all the troubles of humanity come. And there's only one answer to sin. Only one cure. Only one remedy. And that's the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross that you might be washed and made clean, that you might be forgiven, and that you might be right before heaven, and go there even one day, should you, that is, repent and believe the gospel. You see, the displeasure of God, all around you, all over you, and only one answer, only one way out, only one way of escape. Try and set your ways and turn to the Lord. God says in His holy word, how would you turn to the Lord? Through His Son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish in their sin, but have everlasting life. That's the way Jesus Himself is there is no other name under heaven by which a person can be saved name of God's Son Jesus Christ whom I declare to you here this afternoon oh turn to him turn to him run to him flee from the wrath to come where to you say into the arms of Jesus the only Savior the one who came and lived and loved and died and rose again dead in order that this life everlasting eternal might be yours in order that you might be saved from the present present wrath of God and the wrath to come all oh, friends there's but one way of escape and it's presented to you this afternoon Jesus Christ 
God's anointed, God's appointed, God's Son sent from heaven, that through Him that you might be saved, delivered from the wrath of God, the displeasure of God. Call upon you today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, shall be saved. Salvation is what the Bible's about, not religion, salvation. The mercy of God, the free mercy of God to sinners, to those that is, whom God saves, whom God blesses with his salvation and the precious gifts of repentance and faith. Cry out to God today. Call upon his name. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's the place to begin on your knees before the cross of King Jesus. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Well, word of God is offered freely to you. No cost and no obligation to you. Read the New Testament for yourself. See that these things are so. Words of Jesus recorded here. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, Hanley. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. You'd like to have a copy of God's word offered to you freely. Yours for the taking. No cost or obligation to you. Can't do you no harm to read, can it? Make you wise for salvation. Bring you to that forgiveness that you don't even know that you need. Oh, dear friends, turn to the Lord today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious soul.